Moinsinn. Neues Video für dich. Der gute Dan Suzuki hat vor kurzem mal die neue AMD-CPU getestet im Hinblick auf äh, Sim Racing und äh, ich habe mir die Ergebnisse mal reingezogen und hier kannst du meine Reaction drauf sehen. Also, Abfahrt, rein ins Intro. Piu. Ich bin so neidisch auf Dan sein Studio, ne? Also Dan, sein neues Studio ist wirklich super, super schön. Ey, ich bin echt am überlegen, ob ich hier alles rauskloppe und auch mal streiche und ein bisschen Umbau, weil das ist wirklich schön. Also nur, ja, wollte ich gerade sagen, also nur diese Wand mit Lenkrädern ist einfach so sick, ne? Ah. Dan hier, welcome to this video. Today hey, we're going to have a look at this thing here. The AMD 7950X 3D. Uh, Dan. Alter, denn seine Videos werden auch immer krasser, ne? Alright, first of all, thank you very much to Case King for sending over one of these chips here for the benchmarks. In case you didn't know, Case King actually has a lot of sim racing stuff these days. You can get Moza or Azatec, Next Level Sim Racing, Simicube. There's a lot of stuff in their store. If you didn't know, check their website out. Oh. So the 7950X3D, what does X3D mean? We do have two chip... Hat er sich so eine Halterung gedruckt? <laughs> Dan, Alter, Dan ist so krass geworden, Mann. Also ich gucke ja seine Videos schon seit, seit, ich glaube, drei Jahren, seitdem ich angefangen habe damit. Und die Production Value ist von hier nach da gegangen. So krass. Let's in that chip. One is like the normal 7950X and one has that 3D vertical cache. So think of it like that. You have 64 megabytes of SRAM on top of the 32 megabytes of level 3 cache on that 3D. Dan ist äh, ein Deutscher, der aber englischen Content macht, ja. Und Dan arbeitet super viel mit, mit Firmen zusammen und hilft denen. Ich, ich habe leider nie herausgefunden, was Dan irgendwie studiert hat, aber Dan ist in irgendeiner Form mit Electric, Ingenieur und macht so Schallpläne und so. Also der ist auch bei GSI, arbeitet an den GSI-Lenkrädern mit. Er hat, glaube ich, mit, wenn ich das richtig in Erinnerung habe, mit 3D Sim Gear schon zusammengearbeitet. Also der hängt in vielen Sachen mit drin und äh, ist sozusagen unterstützt. Ja. Die Cash Core and that has a big impact on most games. We're gonna see if this is the case with Sim Racing as well. We're gonna test iRacing, we're gonna test ACC and Rennsport. And to spoiler you first, the new AMD is the best in all the scenarios that I tested. TDP of the processor is a little lower than the 7950X. We now have 120 instead of 170 watts. And I'll show the charts later, but it is an efficiency monster. I've seen some people being concerned about the two chiplets, like what game uses what chiplet and do I have to do it manually? It's pretty much automatic. I had one case where I had to do it manually, but we'll talk about that later. Dan, Chapeau, deine Haare sind einfach immer on point. Das ist wie bei mir, aus der Dusche raus, bisschen Wind rein und dann fertig, rein ins Video. In general, it's using the Xbox Game Bar feature to determine whether we have a game running or an application. Okay, so all the benchmarks are done with this PC here. You see in the background, that's a 4090 Founders Edition and then 6000 MHz CL30 DDR5 RAM. The AM5 platform matured quite a bit uh, with my initial benchmarks of the 7950X. I had some issues with the RAM timings, but that's not the case anymore. So I ran the same timings on the Intel as on the AMD. I also put the 5800X 3D in this benchmark and obviously I used DDR4 RAM there. 3600 MHz running at CL16. So I did no overclocking. On <laughs> Einsteiger PC, ja, könnte man so sagen. On any of the processors, you can definitely get some more performance out of them if you want to, but they were running stock. The only thing that I did was optimize RAM timings for both the DDR5 and the DDR4 memory. I have not tried crazy overclocks like 7800 MHz plus or something because I don't have the RAM for that. But with the 6000 MHz kit, I've had zero issues to get the RAM to nice timings using the new Ryzen. But let's hop into the benchmarks. I mean, that's why you're watching the video. So for iRacing, I ran two scenarios, always the lab one, because the start scenario is the one that is the most dependent on CPU. Later in the race, you're typically GPU limited in many scenarios. But at the start, with a lot of cars on the screen, this is where the CPU really matters. You probably know the problem. You get like 200 FPS, but at the start, iRacing be like, yeah, how about 30 FPS? So this is really what we need to look at for CPU benchmarks. So first scenario is an ESS race at Spa, lab one, start. And if we look at the 1080p numbers, single screen in this case, we see 
both the 7950X3D, the 7950X non-3D and the i9-13900K are pretty similar with the X3D giving the best average FPS and also 1% low with 445 FPS. And it's pretty much perfectly playable with all of these. Ich muss jetzt mal ganz kurz eine Frage stellen. Wie oft ist Dan in der Woche live? Wie oft lädt er Videos hoch? Weil, also, ich bin, bin mir nicht sicher, ob er jetzt alles, äh, weil, weil er müsste ja theoretisch immer so vom Setup her ein ähnliches gehabt haben. Das heißt, er muss ja in der Theorie alle vier Systeme ausprobiert haben. Das ist so viel Arbeit. Wow. And you don't really notice a big difference between 430 and 445, to be honest. But the X3D is the quickest of the bunch. And the 5800X 3D being a bit slower, still at perfectly playable 372.3 FPS. I've also <laughs> perfectly playable. Ja, so done the same benchmark for 4K resolution, which pretty much shows that we are in a CPU bottleneck here. Because the average FPS don't drop a lot. We went from 445 to 421 on the X3D. Ey, überleg mal vor, ich glaube zwei Jahre oder so. Als wir, ich habe mir vor zwei Jahren, weiß ich, da oben hängt ein 4K-Bildschirm. Und ich habe den hier dran gehabt und ich habe immer versucht, den 4K zu spielen. Und da ging halt gar nichts. Alter, also überleg mal, was du. Ich meine, iRacing ist jetzt nicht so hungrig, ne? Klar. Aber das ist so sick. And the same loss of performance on all the other processors as well, pretty much. It definitely gets more interesting when we go to triple screen. I've done 1440p for this scenario. I know 1080p is probably the better benchmark for looking at raw CPU performance, but I think somebody that buys a top of the line CPU with a quick graphics card will probably not be on 1080p triple. So I think the most fitting scenario is 1440p triple. So that's why I went with this resolution. And if we look at these numbers, they are overall lower, but it's pretty much the same picture with the X3D. Topping the charts at 259.5 FPS, followed by the 7950X and the 13900K, and the uh, AM4 X3D processor being the slowest of the bunch. But still pretty much perfectly playable on any of these CPUs. Spot also, ich meine, Runde 1 ist immer wirklich, also Runde 1 ist wirklich super, super heavy. Das ist richtig doll, dass da 155 Frames rauskommt. Ähm, ich spiele auch in 7680 mal 1440 und ich komme mit so medium durchwachsene Settings auf 115 FPS. Mehr geht da nicht. Dann ist 1390 schon, äh, 3090. Äh, lass mich in Ruhe, Alter! Lüft er schon an, Rechter macht schon Helikopter und will losfliegen. <lacht> That's a pretty easy track on FPS. The next scenario was Long Beach. At the start with 60 cars, so it's pretty much the worst scenario ever. I think Long Beach is one of the most taxing tracks for CPU benchmarks because iRacing, for whatever reason, apparently does a lot of rendering of the surroundings on the CPU. That's what I heard. Not exactly sure if that's true. But Long Beach really is the craziest track in terms of CPU bottleneck. As you can see, same resolutions. We are significantly lower cool. at 173.9 FPS average for the 7950X 3D. 160.7 FPS average for the 13900K, 159.9, very similar on the 7950X, and the 5800X 3D, the slowest of the bunch at 141.2 FPS. If we go to 4K triples, we basically get exactly the same numbers. I mean, we went from 173.9 to 173.8 for the X3D processor. So we can see we are heavily CPU bottlenecked here. The GPU is bored even running at 4K resolution. If we go to 4K triples, it's pretty much unplayable still. But 1080p to 4K single screen, pretty much the same numbers. And then again, 1440p triples, we get a significant drop in performance. Not necessarily because the GPU is bottlenecking here, it's because on triple screens you have to render three viewports. If you think about it, Ui. you have one monitor where you just look in a straight line, and then you have two monitors that look to the side. And to get that triple screen rendering, we need like, think of it like three cameras. 
that are rendered at the same time, one looking to the front and two looking to the side. And this is why we see the significant drop in performance here. The 7950X3D still tops the chart at 68.1 with drops into the 40s here. It gets stuttery. It's still playable, but the engine is not very well optimized. Nevertheless, it's still the best of the four processors that I tested with the 13900K being the second quickest here at 64 FPS average, the 7950X at 61.7 FPS average and the 5800X 3D at 56.1 FPS average. This is really where it gets a little bit messy. Like at the start with drops into the 40 FPS, it's not really that much fun. You can reduce some settings to get the FPS higher. But yeah, I guess it's time for a more modern engine for iRacing maybe. Ich wollte gerade sagen, iRacing ist ja nur, also iRacing ist ja nur wirklich nicht das schönste von allen. So, ich meine, spielt nachher Multiplayer oder sagen wir mal in einem Szenario für In einem Szenario für E-Sports spielt das ja mehr eine Rolle, FPS zu haben, als dass es gut aussieht. Aber das ist schon krass, dass das so dippt. Because, yeah, not good. For iRacing, the X3D is the quickest of all the CPUs that I tested, but not by a large margin. It gets significantly different when we go to ACC. Let's have a look at the numbers. And you can see here, it gets really ridiculous. Again, we are at the start because that is the most CPU intensive scenario. We are wow. at Indianapolis, Lab 1, and the 7950X3D gets an average FPS of 240.9, with the second fastest CPU being the 13900K at more than 70 FPS less, scoring 170.1 FPS on average. You can see that ACC really likes the V-Cache because even the 5800X3D is very close to the i9 at 167.4 FPS. And the 7950X without the V-Cache is at 156 FPS. I mean, if you just look at the impact from the V-Cache from 156 to 240.9 FPS, that's absolutely crazy. If we look at the 4K numbers, again, single screen, we do see that we are slowly introducing a GPU bottleneck on ACC because the FPS dropped from 240 to 217.2, still perfectly playable. And again, the 7950X 3D leads the other CPUs by a huge margin. On my benchmark for the 5800X 3D, I found out that the V-Cache seems to not like higher resolutions that much. Like the impact it has becomes less significant at higher resolutions, which makes sense because we introduce a GPU bottleneck, but the 7950X 3D is not as sensitive to that as the 5800X 3D. If we look at the triple benchmark for ACC, we see that the 7950X 3D still leads the chart with 149.8 FPS. The difference isn't as crazy anymore, but still 22 FPS difference to the second fastest CPU is quite a lot. And here you can also see that the 5800X3D actually drops off more at triple screen and higher resolutions, but the 7950X3D doesn't do that as much. It's still significantly quicker than all the other processors. So yeah, for ACC, I think, it's pretty clear that this is a monster with a performance difference in some scenarios of over 50% compared to an i9 processor. So that's absolutely crazy. And the last game that I... Und der i9, also der i9 ist ja nun wirklich kein schlechtes Gerät. The benchmark is Rennsport and here we saw an issue because Xbox Game Bar doesn't think that Rennsport is a game. That also confirms it's the most realistic simulation, right? <laughs> uh, for real, uh, Rennsport is in beta and Xbox Game Bar doesn't recognize it. So what I had to do is run Process Lasso and basically force the game onto the V-Cache core. So my initial results showed the 13900K topping the charts at 229.8 FPS and then the 7950X and the 7950X 3D pretty much having exactly the same numbers. And then I saw, okay, it's running on the wrong CCD, so I forced it on the Vcache CCD. And then it also topped the i9, not by a big margin, with 233.3 compared to 229.8. This is a single screen benchmark at 1440p. Rennsport right now doesn't support triple screens. I can't stretch it on triple screens, but then we don't get the three viewports and that's pretty much a useless benchmark then. So for now, Rennsport remains a single screen benchmark. So yeah, as you can see in every single scenario that I tested, the X3D has been the best processor, but at what cost? Let's look at the power numbers and we can see it's actually an efficiency monster. I checked if there's a difference whether the game runs on the CCD0 or CCD1 wow. and there's not really a difference in power consumption. If we look at the numbers, it's 91 or 93 watts. Compared to the 139 watts for the 13900K or even 151 watts for the 7950X, 
It's crazy how AMD gets these numbers with that low power consumption. I've also had some people request that I check the temperature. The 5800X 3D seem to run very hot compared to the non-3D cache CPUs. And I kind of can confirm it. If we look at the first two charts, the V-Cache chiplet runs at 63 degrees Celsius and the other chiplet runs at 51. And I tested this by forcing a game on one or the other chiplet. So Does this feel mentioned hot? Okay. So the other one would be parked. And you can see that the Vcash chiplet runs significantly hotter if you use it. But still, 63 and 51 are low numbers compared to the other two CPUs. The 13900K runs at 71 degrees Celsius and the 7950X at 67. All the CPUs were on a 280 AIO, the Be Quiet Sound Loop 2. But none of these temperatures are actually close to the throttling temperatures because sim racing games. Rennsport was the only game that uses a lot of cores and threads. iRacing pretty much uses one and a half threads for all it's doing. For sim racing, we don't really have a scenario where the temperature limit really becomes an issue. Okay, so to sum it up, the set. Also, drei, also, wenn 63 Grad schon hot ist, na Jungs, wenn alle laufen, gute Laune, oua. Ha, also, hier ist <laughs> 7950X 3D definitely is the best processor for sim racing, but it's also the most expensive one. What about the 7800X 3D? I did run a test on iRacing where I turned off the CCD1, the non vcache core, and see what the performance is. And it's pretty much the same. If we look at the chart, we went from 445.2 to 441.1 FPS on average. Obviously, I don't know if the real 7800X 3D will perform exactly like that but it's likely. So probably the 7800X 3D is the best price performance CPU you can get for sim racing. And if you really want to build a gaming PC and don't want to spend the money on the 7950X 3D, maybe wait till April and get the 7800X 3D. And another thing I want to add, for whatever reason, I, I can't really see it in the numbers, but for whatever reason, the 7950X 3D seems more fluent when you're playing. It's, it's a very subjective thing. Maybe it's in my head, I don't know. But to me, I always seem to recognize when the 7950X 3D benchmark was running that the game just seemed smoother overall. I don't know, hard to explain. But yeah, that's it with the review for the new... Das geht mir, uh, Dan, also ich, ich glaube, ich weiß, was er gerade meint, weil der Wechsel zwischen der AMD und der, uh, der, AMD und der uh, GeForce Grafikkarte hat bei mir denselben Effekt gehabt, obwohl die Frames nicht wirklich einen großen Unterschied gemacht haben. Nur, dass das jetzt halt Grafikkarten sind, logischerweise, ne? aber es, es lief irgendwie flüssiger. Das ist genauso wie in ACC. Das könnt ihr gerne mal ausprobieren, wenn ihr ACC fahrt. Macht mal einmal Fullscreen an und einmal Windowed. Das ist wirklich ein Unterschied, wie die Spiele laufen. 7950X 3D. Next review will be the Mozar H Pattern Shifter. And after that, let me know in the comments down below if you want to see a review of the new Grid Engineering MPX. Very nice steering wheel. Yes, please. Or if you want to see a review of the Niam Simtech pedals. Wait, what? That's in Sim. Wait, warte mal, that's in pedals? Mit Alu Profil? Oh, ja, bitte. Don't sell at less than 200 euros. So yeah, thank you very much for watching. If you liked the video, maybe give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, subscribe to the channel, and I hope to see you all in the next video. Bye bye. Hey guys, Dan. Chat. Können wir zu Dan gehen und Dan mal einen Daumen smashen und einen Kommentar? Weil wenn es wirklich jemand verdient hat, dann Dan. Also wirklich, der ist so ein toller Typ, was seine... Also privat habe ich nicht so viel mit ihm gesprochen, nur ein bisschen auch äh, sehr netter Mensch so, aber das, was er macht, ist wirklich sehr hilfreich und sehr gut für die Community. Rennt der in die Bude ein. Tju, schön, dass du das Video bis hierher geguckt hast. Ich würde mich sehr freuen, wenn du dem guten Dan etwas äh, Liebe da lässt. Das Video findest du unten in der Beschreibung, das Originalvideo. Ist wirklich ein unglaublich toller Content Creator. Und ist für mich persönlich ein sehr großes Vorbild, was Sim Racing Reviews angeht. Der hat so viel Wissen um alles drumherum. Das ist der Wahnsinn. Also schau doch einfach mal bei Dan vorbei. Lass ihm ein bisschen Liebe da. Und dann wünsche ich dir einen unglaublich schönen Tag. Das Übliche kennst du ja, das Spirenzchen. Schreib es einen Kommentar, presst das Däumchen, abonnierst es nochmal rein. Und dann sage ich Tschüssikowski. Bis dann.